All right. Vn a sub n is equal to c1 a sub n minus 1 plus c2 a sub n minus 2 plus all the way up to ck a sub n minus k 8.2. So 8.2 covers more than just this particular recurrence relation. Anybody want to give me the name of this recurrence relation? Do, 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 do. Linear homogeneous recurrence relation of degree k with constant coefficients, right? So this is a linear homogeneous recurrence relation of degree k with constant coefficients. Uh, the 8.2 goes on to do non-homogeneous. This is the only one we're going to do from 8.2. This will be the last thing that we're going to have to be able to solve. Okay, for all of these, what happens is the solution to this is going to be a sub n is going to be equal to r sub n. But we will find that there are k r's to get. If it's a degree k, there are going to be k bases of r that solve this thing. So we actually have not one solution, we have k solutions. Now we're going to have to figure out how can I take a bunch of solutions and put them in together as one solution. Well, first off, we're going to have to do, so step one for any one of these problems is going to be, so part one is basically find the R's. How do we do that is we just simply plug it in. If you plug in an R, this particular problem becomes a R to the A sub N becomes, so we have this A sub N is equal to C1 a sub n minus 1 plus c2, a sub n minus 2 plus all the way up to ck, a sub n minus k. We just simply plug it in. Plug in r to the n. That is r to the n. This is r to the n minus 1. This is r to the n minus 2. These are r to the n minus k. Is everybody okay with that? The function is just r to the power of whatever you were doing. So if it's n minus 1, it's r to the n minus 1, r to the n minus 2, r to the n minus k. What happens on this problem, though, is a negative exponent means it's in the denominator, right? So I can multiply this entire thing. If you do normal algebra, this here, this Rn, this Rn minus 1, this Rn minus 2, these Rn minus k, everybody has an Rn. They all cancel. I can take everything out of the denominator and put it up into the numerator. If you do that, this thing will become 1 equals C1 R to the k minus 1 plus C2 R to the k minus 2 plus ck r to the 0. Whoops, rk. I can't write things right. What I did is I just simply multiplied by everybody by r to the k, and then divided everybody by r to the n. That's what that did. If I do that, this thing then becomes r to the k minus c1 r to the k minus 1 minus c2 r to the k minus 2 minus dot 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 minus ck equals 0. In other words, this, by plugging in the solution, multiplying by the denominator, dividing by what everybody has in common, becomes a polynomial. This polynomial is called the characteristic polynomial. And this is then what we need to solve. Now, here's the deal. 
your choice. I have to find the R's. Obviously, we solve the polynomial to find the R's. Right? That's what's going to happen. Your choice. If you want to, you can start off with your characteristic equation. You, you can plug in Rn everywhere. You can do your algebra. You can get to your polynomial and then solve your polynomial. But do you see the pattern of the polynomial? What's the polynomial doing? What's the power of the polynomial? If it's a degree five, if it's a degree five uh, linear homogeneous recurrence relation of degree k with constant coefficients, if it's a degree five, what's the degree of this polynomial? Five. And then what happens? R to the fifth, R to the fourth, R to the third, R to the two, R to the one, R to the zero equals zero. What's your coefficients? One minus the first minus minus minus. Everybody see the pattern? Your choice. You can either put it in, do all the algebra, or just jump right here. For example, if I said a sub n is equal to two, a sub n minus two plus three a sub n minus four. What's the long way? I know it's r to the n. So this is r to the n is equal to r to the n minus 2 plus 3r to the n minus 4. But that's equal to r to the n is equal to 2r to the n over r squared plus 3r to the n over r to the fourth. All the r to the n's cancel. I multiply everybody by r to the fourth, and that's r to the fourth is equal to 2r squared plus 3, and therefore I need to solve r to the fourth minus 2r squared minus 3 is equal to 0. And I would solve this, solve to get the 4r's. Everybody see how that happened by algebra? Just plug in the answer. It's, it's r to the n. That's the answer. That's, that's what we know. We just got to figure out the r's. You just plug it in and do all the algebra. Or, if you don't want to do that, this a sub n was 2, a sub n minus 2 plus 3, a sub n minus 4. I can go straight to the characteristic polynomial. It's r to the fourth. Why is it r to the fourth? What's the degree of this guy? 4. So it's r to the fourth. Minus. What's the coefficient of the a sub n minus 1? 0. There are no a sub n minus 1s. Minus 2. What's the a sub n minus 2s? Well, so it's r squared minus 0r minus 3 is 0. Right? Why? Because this guy of a sub n is actually what? It's a sub n is equal to 0 a sub n minus 1s plus 2 a sub n minus 2 plus 0 a sub n minus 3s plus 3 a sub n minus 4s, right? Just put the things in the right order. It's the same polynomial, right? The zeros are gone. Your choice. Either memorize the pattern or if you don't want to memorize it, you know what the solution is, plug it in, do algebra, but that's going to, you're going to take about 30 seconds worth of algebra. Do a bunch of these until you get good at it. All I want you to be able to do is, given a linear homogeneous recurrence relation of degree k, immediately write the polynomial. Get comfortable with that. Because the polynomial is where you're going to find your r's. Now here's a question. This is now college algebra. That's a degree 4 polynomial. But it's quadratic like, right? It's acting like a quadratic because r squared squared is r to the fourth. So I could treat this as a double quadratic problem. You could use a quadratic formula to solve for r squared, and then you'll have four equations, <laughs> and then you have those two equations, which will become four solutions. Yay or nay? No? Like here, how would I solve this? R squared minus 2, R to the fourth minus 2R squared. 
r to the fourth minus 2r squared, what was it, minus 3? Darn it, that factors. Oh, well. Eh, that's fine. That's r squared squared, right? So what is this? This would have to be r squared. What are the factors of negative 3 that adds negative 2? So minus 3 times r squared plus 1 equals 0. So what's our solutions? r is equal to radical 3. r is equal to minus radical 3. r is equal to i. r is equal to minus i. So that's the first thing that we need to be able to do. I know what the solution is. It's r to the n. But we have to be able to do, okay, here's our, we need to be able to go from a recurrence relation. We need to be able to go from the recurrence relation to the polynomial. But then once I do that, I need to be able to solve polynomials. This is college algebra. Or actually, no, actually, this is high school algebra. All right, how do you solve these things? I'll, I'll make them usually, so I'll make them so that they factor, right, to try and go as quickly as possible. But you have to know algebra. Everybody okay with that? All right. Now comes the question of that's the first part you do. That's part one as we find the R's. Okay. Part two is, well, what do I do with them? Part two. You found the R's. And so A sub N has to be, say, R1 to the N. And A sub N is equal to R2 to the N. And then a sub n is equal to r k to the n. So we found we found them, and so I have all these these r's right here. So I actually have one, two, k. I have k answers. How do I shove the k answers back together? All right. The one solution is going to be a sub n equals something times r1 to the n plus something times r2 to the n plus something times rk to the n. Now, these things in front of the r, so we're going to make a combination of them. Something times the first plus something times the second plus something times the third plus something. Yeah. But the question is, what are the somethings? The thing that goes in front of it is going to be a polynomial of n. And it's going to have a certain number of terms. And the terms will depend on the multiplicity of how many times that root showed up. So if R1 occurred, like the number 3, let's say the solution was 3, 3, 3, and 2. So 3 occurred 3 times, and the number 2 occurred once, right? What happens here is this will be a polynomial of n with the multi... I use the word... What's, here's a really good example. I said the word multiplicity. Did anybody go, I have no idea what you just said? What's the multiplicity of a root? The multiplicity of a root is how many times that root occurs when you solve. When I said multiplicity, what I mean is this. For example, if I told you that a plus 1 times, sorry, A, <laughs> x plus 1 times x minus 2 times x plus 3 is equal to 0. What are my roots? x equals, what's the root for the first guy? What's the next guy? What's the next guy? What's the next guy? Are those the same number? And so this is called a multiplicity of 2. I have four roots, they're just not distinct. Right? You're always going to have the same those number of roots. And so this one is multiplicity of 2. This is a multiplicity 
of 1. It only occurs once. That's a multiplicity of 1. It only occurs once. If I say polynomial of n, give me an, ex somebody, an example. If I say a polynomial of n, what I mean is you have a constant. And then, let's go, where, anyways, a constant times n times n squared. That's a polynomial of n, right? n is the variable, and it goes up like a polynomial, right? So if I said I need one term, you would get one term. If I said you need two terms, you would pick two terms. If I would say you need three terms, you would pick three terms. Is everybody okay with that? So multiplicity is how many times does the root occur? A polynomial of n is a polynomial of n. And what happens on our problem is the thing that goes in front of these are a polynomial of n with the multiplicity of the root number of terms. So we have no forward or backward reasoning as we do this. We know, no forward or backwards iteration to get to these solutions. We just simply find all the R's and then we write the answer depending on how many R's you have. All right. See if I can put that together. So example. Let's say I had that I had A sub N is equal to blah and we found that the R's, the R's are, R1 was equal to 2, R2 was equal to 2, R3 was equal to 2, R4 was equal to a negative 1, and say R5 was equal to a negative 1, and then R6 was equal to 7. How many roots did I find? 6. What would that tell you about the word blah? 6 roots means what was, what was the degree of the polynomial? It was a degree 6. So if polynomial is a degree, degree 6, what was the degree of the uh, recurrence relation. Six. So I know it's a degree six thing, right? Actually, this is how I make these problems. The way I make these problems is I pick what I want you to have for your R's, multiply it back together, get the polynomial, but the polynomial's values tell me what those coefficients were for the guy up in the original character, in the original recurrence relation, and then I just write that down and erase all my work. So I pick the answer that I want and then work that way and then make you go back through the entire thing. Or, for like a couple of problems, if I have a couple of these, I might just simply do this. And if I just do this, what's your answer? A sub n is equal to what? Well, all right, how many times does the number 2 occur? Three times. So what is it going to have? I'm going to have a 2 to the n, but what goes in front of him? A constant, a constant, and a constant, right? Plus, what is my next root? Negative 1 and negative 1. How many times did it occur? Twice. So it has to have, all right, I'm at C0, C1, C2. So I need a C3 and then a C4. And then plus 7 to the n. Oh, I'm sorry, like this way. 2 to the n. And how many times does 7 occur? Once. So all I need is one constant. Is everybody okay that if you have a multiplicity of 3, you would write that? If you would have a multiplicity of 2, you would write that. If you have a multiplicity of 1, you write that. Yep. 
Okay. Now, my problem with this is this is my generic solution here. That is the function that when I plugged into my recurrence relation generates the exact same sequence. The problem is what do I not have? I don't know what these one, two, three, four, five, six constants are. But if I gave you six initial values, if I gave you six basis values, you could find them. And so this is the general solution. And then if you are given the basis values, you can then find the constants, like, we, like I did for last class for the Fibonacci numbers. Remember last class where I, you know, we went through that we have f of n is f of n minus 1 my plus f of n minus 2 and f of 0 is 0 and f of 1 is 1. We found out that we would, the first thing we would do is say this is r squared minus r minus 1 equals 0 which meant r was equal to 1 plus and minus radical 5 all over 2 which meant that my generic solution was a sub n is equal to some, since these both occur once it's some constant, I'll call it C1, 1 plus radical 5 all over 2 to the n plus some constant, 1 minus radical 5 all over 2 to the n. But the third thing that we would did, did was if we were given, uh, I'm using f's, so fn, if I was given f0 is 0 and f1 is 1, we could plug those in. You plug in to these things here into this entire, this is the general solution, right? That guy right there is the general solution. I just don't know what the constants are. But for the specific Fibonacci numbers, I can plug in my basis values and you find out that C1 is 1 over radical 5 and C2 is minus 1 over radical 5. And then you just plug those in and then your specific solution Fn is equal to 1 over radical 5 times 1 plus radical 5 all over 2 to the n minus 1 over radical 5, 1 minus radical 5 all over 2 to the n. This sort of part one of make sure on this problem that you see, this is a good one just to simply go through because it has radicals and it makes you work out your algebra, right? Go from a recurrence relation to the polynomial solve the polynomial, write the answers, right? If I just gave you the R's, you should immediately write the answer. That should all take just a little bit of thought and then the ability to write. Then you have to plug in the zeros and the ones and then now this is a system of equations. Uh, computationally, um, what wastes the most amount of time on this problem is this. Can you solve polynomials? Right, because that's just algebra, and the other is this, which is systems of equations. For example, on this problem up here, if I was given six values, that's a six by six system of equations. Of appropriate size, that's going to take you a half hour to an hour just to go through a linear algebra problem of that nature. Right, so that's six by six, that's 36 numbers that I'm going to have to go through and put it in re reduced row echelon form to spit out the answers. And if it's not nice, pretty integers, it's not going to be clean. Right? But in the end, the most time consuming part of this uses tools that are kind of old. Because all we did was just guess the solution, boom, that's the answer. And how do I put the answers together? So that's what I want you to be able to do. Take this one, make sure you go through it and be comfortable with it. And then start going through the section and start doing 
linear homogeneous recurrence relations of degree k with constant coefficients, not the non-homogeneous, stop at the homogeneous, and try several of those. 